Next up, we have our very own Nick Goldup, who is going to be presenting on realigning care during the COVID crisis and lessons, lessons learned. Nick, we look forward to hearing from you. Hi, everybody. I, um, think I hope you're all well. My name is Nick Goldup, and I'm the Director of Care Improvement at the MD Association for England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And also, I sit as a director on the board of the International Alliance. It's a, it's a real shame not to be with you in person today. However, thank you for the opportunity to speak about how we at the MD Association have realigned our care during the coronavirus pandemic, um, and also to reflect on some of the lessons learned through this period. Saying it's been a hard year is uh, certainly an understatement. However, we've achieved a lot at the association um, to support people living with MND and ALS. And I'm really very proud of everything we've achieved as a team of volunteers and staff. Firstly, um, it's important to start by saying, like all of you, our entire focus has been on how we look to support our community at this strange time. Since the beginning of the uh, crisis, the MND Association reacted really very quickly to the needs of people uh, living with an effective IMD and ALS by implementing what we called our COVID-19 action plan. The, um, the action plan was launched on the 30th of March uh, with the purpose of ensuring that the association made the best use of its resources in responding to the needs of the people affected by MND and ALS. And we set about a two phase approach to this plan. However, for the purpose of today's presentation, I'll talk about both phases together. It assumed that staff and volunteers would uh, work closely together and that staff activities were not restricted by the remit of their substantive roles. In fact, we re redeployed care staff overnight across our regional teams, across our head office teams and across our directorates. So I wanted to spend a bit of time today to talk to you through the work that we've achieved so far. Our plans contain four key work streams and numerous specific projects. The first area of focus was understanding and addressing where possible the needs of people with and affected by MND and ALS by reaching out and making contact. Within a couple of weeks, we had achieved the um, wonderful task of, meet, of, of uh, reaching out to everybody with MND that we knew of. So that's just under 4,000 people with the aim to understand their current position, those at risk and those who needed further support. Hopefully everybody can can hear me now. Um, yes, we can hear you now, Nick. Excellent. <laughs> it, it was a bit Benny Hill there for a second, so I'm going to take over live from uh, live from London. Which <laughs> Welcome to our morning, Nick. Go for <laughs> it. Yeah, it was much smoother when I did it yesterday, Tammy. I'm not sure what you're doing today, but you know, never mind. Um, so I'm going to hopefully take over from where I left off. So uh, here we go. So. Um, I was talking a little bit about the uh, work streams that we, we put in place. Uh, the first area of focus was understanding and addressing where possible the needs of people uh, affected by MND and ALS by reaching out and making contact. So within a couple of weeks, uh, we'd contacted everyone uh, with MND that we knew of. Uh, that's just under 4,000 people uh, with the aim to understand their current position, um, those at risk and those who need further support. And this was carried out mainly through uh, the telephone. Um, and a lovely statistic to share with you is that 80% of the contacts we made uh, were through the, our wonderful volunteers. Um, we also sent out over 4,000 letters and emails to people with MND and ALS, which included links to specific coronavirus uh, resources uh, and an offer to support from the association. And a key trend that we saw uh, from this outreach was the desire for ongoing support from our community. And in, in fact, as a result of this, we uh, now support between 1,000 and 1,500 people with MND and ALS each month who've requested this ongoing support from the association. And during the month of October, uh, 1,326 people uh, contacted, uh, sorry, were contacted by the by association staff and volunteers, and that's about 34% of the people that we knew, and 84% of these contacts were made by volunteers. Um, Feedback has been brilliant, and uh, just to give you a recent quote, somebody mentioned to us, but somebody living with MND said, "Your calls every week have been the one constant with all the things going on." So thank you for your wonderful support. The um, the ongoing contacts uh, with our community also identified support needs and clinical questions uh, that we, as an association, just re we needed help answering. And for this, we turned to the experts uh, by creating a clinical expert panel. 
made up of a team of uh, wonderful neurologists and health professionals who gave us access to their insight and advice on a weekly basis. And, and people needed to know what was happening. They needed to know how it would affect them, how it would uh, affect their care and impact on their loved ones. And this group provided an expert platform to help answer this. And the feedback to our, from our community um, has been fantastic. And we've been able to provide that through, through our website. Uh, we also invited experts to talk through um, expert interviews and discussions, um, which was uh, informal virtual set of videos to help answer some of the key questions. Uh, and this was, uh, again, very, very well received by our community. So as well as reaching out, the second um, section of our work was to understand and address the health and social care landscape. So in other words, how the situation impacted on services for people living with MND and ALS and then using our networks to advise this to our community. Um, we wanted to understand the impact on, on services across the 22 care centres that we have in England, Wales and Northern Ireland and across the multidisciplinary care teams. Um, so we therefore used our regional uh, staff to make contact with all of the centres and coordinators and MDTs and health professionals in a coordinated way. And this was to identify and understand their current provision uh, by the clinical teams locally and also understand the multidisciplinary teams specifically on areas such as respiratory and nutrition, palliative care and, and social care. And this allowed us to have a, a up-to-date advice at a local level and also to put flat and to flag any potential issues uh, working with local health systems to make sure standards of care for our community were maintained. Um, thirdly, by supporting people with an effective IMD through practical and emotional support, so this was carried out through one-to-one -one and group conversations delivered through staff and volunteers, uh, including conversations on the phone and video calls, signposting to other services and other social uh, and virtual networks online. Um, and they, they included things like mindful and meditation sessions, Tai Chi, uh, breathing, meditation and fitness uh, videos as well. And that was particularly useful for, for our carers. Um, we also launched some really practical ways of support uh, and the, probably the, the best one to talk to you about is the emergency grant provision that we had. Uh, this was by way of a £250 emergency uh, grant for, for, for people living with MD and ALS. Um, and so far, we've supported 150 people. And uh, thanks to the Doddy Weir Foundation that we helped, uh, helped us on that in, in partnership. Um, and then finally, the fourth stream of work uh, was providing additional support for children, young people and families and adults affected by MD. Um, over, over the last uh, past few months, I should say, we've set up ongoing support calls for families, uh, supporting over 45 families to date. Uh, we also began our, a trial of uh, physical memory boxes uh, for family members to record thoughts and memories of, of loved ones. Um, and this piece of work was uh, in support with uh, the Nick Smith Foundation in the UK. And we've issued 25 across four pilot areas. And just last month, uh, we launched a, a lovely partnership with the UK charity Bernardo's to provide online and telephone counselling to children, young people and families, which is just terrific. And we look forward to seeing how that progresses. Um, and to promote all of this work, we produced an online COVID hub on our website, which was a go to place for content and advice, including specific animations, videos and blogs. And uh, do go onto the MND Association website and have a look at that. So all in all, not too bad for a, a few months, but we're, uh, we're an impatient bunch. And the last uh, sort of few months, we focused on some other areas um, more specifically. So we knew from feedback that we needed to focus more on, on carers. Uh, it took a, a crisis to concentrate our efforts, but I'm really glad that we did. So our commitment to carers project launched in June. And since then, we've been working and gathering information about local support services with a total of 85 information grants, uh, sorry, information guides, I should say, which have been produced. And this is local information guides to talk to our local communities about um, support for carers in their community. Uh, we've also developed peer support groups online, uh, hosting information and wellbeing events online and talking to carers about what support needs that they want from us. And to bring this to life a little bit, cumulatively from June until October this year, uh, 616 participants have attended 67 groups supporting on support to carers. Um, and finally, just to say that I, I would like just to talk a little bit about emerging themes and, and the world is changing, it feels, on a daily basis and the, the direct impact on health provision is, is vast. 
So we are making it our aim to continue to stay close to all the key issues. And these are areas such as appointments and procedures, pressure on health staff, the in impact of uh, the second wave that are in and potentially a third wave, uh, limitations on procedures such as pegs and access to NIV and equipment um, and those sorts of issues really. So we're staying very, very close to those. And of course, how uh, any vaccine that's rolled out um, can be accessed by our communities as quickly as possible. Um, so what have we been, so we've been working hard, uh, delivered a lot for our communities, uh, but, but what have we learned? And I, I, there's a, a small handful of things just to sort of reflect on really. So I think in summary, the first one is the speed of learning and change has, has been obvious. So in terms of uh, reactivity to the crisis, we, we wrote a strategy and redeployed staff within a week. And it just goes to show how quick we can, we can move as an organization. Uh, it took a pandemic, but uh, we are impatient and we can react really, really quickly when, when, we, when we want to. Uh, virtual support is probably here to stay in some form at least, um, especially as it removes the barriers of geography. Um, albeit there is a time and a place for virtual and face-to-face -face meetings um, as well. Uh, and digital is not a substitute for, for real life, but um, I think that's going to be uh, part of our future going forward. Thirdly, we discovered that our services can change. So for example, our, our helpline, the MND Connect helpline, now proactively calls out to people living with MND and ALS rather than being a reactive helpline. Uh, and we've also learned how we can utilize our volunteers uh, more, for example, to support through direct contact with people. And finally, communication, we can all, you know, uh, we can and we will engage differently going forward. Um, and we, I've talked about the expert panel, which, uh, you know, previously we met twice a year, and now we can access that group weekly. Plus, we've got lots of internal and external ways of communicating through blogs and podcasts and webinars and all the other words that we didn't know existed a year ago. Uh, we can use all of those um, in different ways to, to communicate. So I, I hope this has been useful and informative. Um, of course, happy to speak to anybody after this about uh, what we've done in more detail and provide examples. And um, like I say, please look on the MD Association website. Uh, it's been a tough and busy year. However, during this period, I think our volunteers and our supporters and our staff and the support of the International Alliance has just been incredible. And I know that this, would, this continued help will continue to deliver great services for people with MD and ALS communities in, in uh, England, Wales and Northern Ireland. So Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Nick. We're very appreciative of your presentation this morning and for, again, bouncing in. Um, for any questions for Nick, if you could please message him directly, that would be very helpful and he'll be able to respond. We need to keep our program moving along this morning so that we can get to the rest of the presentations.